Welcome back to Upside Down Data. We need to talk about Bitcoin. So I realized there might be some folks who are new to the channel and or even new to Bitcoin. So I wanted to start with a historical perspective about where we are and what we might expect going forward. And then I wanna talk about what some of our models are seeing and also some on-chain data, data extracted from the Bitcoin network itself. They can also tell us about the health of this rally and its ability to continue further up. So let's go ahead and get into it. So I wanna start from the very beginning here. So obviously we're seeing Bitcoin breaking to new all-time highs. I wanna talk about how this fits into the broader structure of the Bitcoin market ever since basically its beginning and why what we're seeing now makes a whole lot of sense and what we might wanna look for then to know when we might be getting near the end of this rally. So if you've been following the channel, you know that we talk about cycles all the time. This idea of a market cycle for Bitcoin. If you're not familiar, a market cycle is usually defined as including both an expansion period and a contraction period. So basically a bull market and then a bear market. So you can consider this to be one market cycle, this to be another market cycle, this to be another one. And then right now we're in the expansionary period of a new market cycle, one that started back here in late 2022. And so that really seems to be where we're at. We have basically been following the same playbook for Bitcoin that we've done in the past. Expansion, it looks actually, if you look at it, probably most visually similar to something like we saw here in the 2016, 2017 bull market, where it's not as just vertical as we've seen in some of the other bull markets, but a little bit slower to kind of build up and then leading into maybe a bigger bull off top. It's kind of slower move up and then maybe an expansion more rapidly coming right now. But it's notable that this has been playing out. It's generally every four years, Bitcoin has seen this, where you have these, generally speaking, over a four-year period, a cycle will play out, then you get a reset into the next cycle, so on and so forth. And the reason why we care about Bitcoin so much in the crypto space is A, it's of course the largest crypto asset. So it has a lot of clout from that perspective. It has the most adoption, the most mind share. It's probably been legitimized the most of any crypto asset that there is. But there's other reasons why we care about it. So I wanna talk a little bit about the Bitcoin market cap in relation to the market cap of all other crypto assets, excluding Bitcoin. So blue is Bitcoin market cap. This pink line is the market cap of all other crypto assets minus Bitcoin. If you're not familiar, market cap is defined as the price of an asset multiplied by the total amount of supply that there is for it. You think of it as like the total worth. It's the same calculation as you get for market cap of a stock. And one of the really notable things right now that's going on is with this big expansion that Bitcoin just experienced after election day here in the United States, it's up at 1.74 trillion as I record this. Note how that's quite a bit higher than the 1.127 trillion that the rest of crypto is at. Bitcoin on its own is worth more essentially or has a larger market cap than the rest of crypto combined. And this is important because these moments do actually happen, but they happen at specific points in a market cycle. And that is when you're about to go into these big parabolic moves, that's when you'll see Bitcoin moving early. It really expands before the rest of the market. It kind of sucks all the liquidity that's available, all the money, all the funds that people are looking to put into crypto. It sucks all of that into itself, goes on this crazy run. And then after that, money rotates out of Bitcoin. People take profit out of Bitcoin and then they move it into altcoins, which then run later. And this is something that's played out cycle after cycle. So I was just showing you here the last cycle, but even when you go back and look at the cycle before then, you'll see a similar story where Bitcoin's moving first and then altcoins are moving after. So this is why it's really important to pay attention to Bitcoin, not only for itself and when is a good time maybe to lock up profits within Bitcoin in and of itself, but it gives you a good idea of where are altcoins likely to go next. And if you see Bitcoin go on one of these big parabolic moves, then very likely, unless some catastrophe happens, altcoins are going to follow after. And that presents a lot of opportunity. So then the question that we have is when is Bitcoin going to be near or at the end of its run so that all those profits will then start flowing into altcoins more aggressively? And that's what I want to move into now for the rest of the video. Look at some of our models and some on-chain data then give us a sense of where is Bitcoin right now? Are we near that top or do we still have a ways to go? So the first model I want to talk about here is our upside downside potential indicator or UDPI. If you follow the channel, you're very familiar. If you haven't, it's a risk 
model. So basically this blue line here is the UDPI. High values mean high risk, low values mean low risk. And this is the long-term version of the model. So here's what moves that play out over months to multiple months, longer term in its time horizon, more macro focused. And you see when you get to the top of the scale, which is five for the UDPI, then that tends to be when you're at these market cycle tops. You're at the end of the bull market when you get up to these really high levels. Whereas on the other side, if you're really low, it means you're either at the bottom of the bear market or still at a very good accumulation point in an early bull market. And this has happened over and over and over again. It played out that exact same way in this bear market. We got all the way down to these levels. These were the kind of just blindly buy Bitcoin levels. And then off to the races we went. And now we see risk is moving up as we would expect it to, Bitcoin breaking out to new all-time highs. But notably, we still have a lot of room to work with. We're up currently at about 0.8. Again, five is the top of the scale, negative five is the bottom of the scale, plenty of room to work with. And especially if this is one of those full expansionary periods that Bitcoin is in, we'd expect it to get back to the top of this scale. So there's a lot of room to work with. We haven't even gotten to the same level that we're at at this local top back in March, the first time we set a new all-time high this cycle before we had this long consolidation before this current breakout. So more room to work with for sure from this model's perspective. So looking at this, it doesn't seem like Bitcoin is especially likely to be at the top at this point, assuming we are just going into one of these big parabolic moves, which it really looks like we are at the early stages of. Okay, so that's one of our models. If you want to take a look at the data for yourself, you can do so at our website, partydigital.io, link in the description. I have live UDPI data and a bunch of other model data there that you can check out. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is on-chain data. So on-chain data is basically, the idea is that the Bitcoin network and frankly, most crypto networks are public and anyone can just go in and look at transactions that are happening. And you can gain a lot of information from that. You can see when are people moving their Bitcoin? When are they acquiring Bitcoin? When are they distributing Bitcoin? You can see a lot of activity. So you actually see what are people doing? Are people selling? Are people buying? Who's selling? Who's buying? Those types of things. So one of the things that oftentimes people like to look at with on-chain data, or one of the pieces of on-chain data I like to care about is what are longer term holders doing? So these are people who've been holding Bitcoin for a long time. They're probably people who've been around for a while. They maybe are more likely to be kind of believers in Bitcoin or at least have some conviction to hold it for a long time. And they're not satisfied to sell at a small amount of profit. They're waiting for, you know, if they bought all the way at the depths of the bear market, they're waiting for the tops of the bull market to be distributing. And you see this over and over again in crypto cycles. When long-term holders sell aggressively, that suggests that you're probably near the top. So this red line that I'm showing you here is the total realized price for Bitcoin. Basically what this is capturing is the overall average cost basis of all Bitcoin that are held on the Bitcoin blockchain. Cost basis is basically the price at which you bought the Bitcoin that you hold. So this is just basically across everyone who has a Bitcoin wallet where Bitcoin lives, this is the cost basis at which that lives. And so what's useful about that is you can see who's selling. So basically, if you see the, the realized price here move up aggressively, what that means is that people who had lower cost bases, maybe who bought down here or bought down here, are now selling and that's being replaced with people who are buying up here, who have way higher cost bases, which pulls the average up. Basically, big moves to the upside here suggest a lot of longer term holders, people who bought at way lower prices, are selling. And then people are acquiring at these higher levels. And so what that can suggest is that when you see this aggressive move up, that's a sign that you're entering into the later stages of those parabolic moves, especially when it starts to move up really aggressively, notable tops tend to form because there's a lot of selling pressure that gets added as people are taking aggressive profits. These people are in heavy profits, they wanna lock that in. And then ultimately that becomes too much for the market to bear at a certain point. And then you go into this big bear market. Basically Bitcoin gets overextended. The people who bought down here all sell, not enough new demand can step in at these higher prices. You then go into a bear market. 
And we can actually visualize this directly if we just look at the rate of change of this red line. So that's what I'm graphing out here with this green line. This is basically the 90 day rate of change of this red line here. So when you see when it's going up aggressively, this green line will spike up. And what these spikes mean is again, people who bought at way lower prices are selling aggressively. And that's what leads to this really high rate of change as they're selling out and then people are buying at these way higher prices, moving the total aggregate cost basis way up. So what's important about what's going on right now is that though we are seeing a slight uptick in this metric, we can see this starting to happen here, we're nowhere near the levels that we've seen in even just the last cycle or the cycle before that. We're nowhere near some of those levels yet. We're not even at the level that we saw going into the March uh, local top over here. So this would be another suggestion that we still have some room to work with. We're not at these late stages of the parabolic move yet from this perspective. We're not seeing long-term holders aggressively sell out yet. Now, I do think that's coming. And so that's one of the things where I'll be watching metrics like this in addition to things like the UDPI. See, when are we starting to see all those telltale signs of a top forming? But the good news is that right now we're not there yet. So another thing that we can look at that can also tell us about selling pressure that might make it harder for Bitcoin to continue up and then ultimately lead to a crash is we can actually look on chain about realized profits on the network. That's what I'm visualizing here, the network realized profit and loss. And really what I'm showing you here with this red line here is basically the realized profit normalized to the price of Bitcoin. So instead of the profit being denominated in dollars, which is what uh, this metric here is showing is denominated in the number of Bitcoins sold basically in profit or loss. So you'll notice that in bull markets, you tend to see these big spikes up of massive profits that are being taken. And ultimately what will happen is this overwhelms the amount of demand that's there leading into the bear market. Then at the bottom of bear markets, you see the exact opposite, massive selling at loss, basically capitulation, people just giving up who had bought at higher levels, just selling at massive loss, just getting out. And those actually tend to mark moments when you're actually at the bottom, that that selling pressure all happens. There's no one left to sell. And then demand actually can step in, stabilize price, and then you actually end up moving up from there. Now, I actually like to visualize this by applying a moving average to it. So we can see across a period of time, what is the aggregate profit or loss that's being taken? And so you can see that in the tops of bull markets, this gets quite high. In the depths of bear markets, this gets quite low. And so again, looking at where we are right now, we're still below where we were back here in the earlier parts of this year, when a lot of profits were being taken as we were, got to and or around that new all-time high. We haven't gotten there yet. So that's where when I look across these different metrics, so I look at this on-chain data, looking at how much profit's actually being locked in right now, we can still see that it's not excessive yet. We're not at that point yet. And even if we just look at the raw data here, not the moving average, we can see that there's just a bit of a spike here, but not even as large as we've seen just recently in this big range. A lot of Bitcoin changed hands through this consolidation. And so profits were taken, but what it means is that people who are buying at these levels were doing so expecting Bitcoin to go way higher. A lot of the people who were gonna lock in profits at these levels did. And that means that the people who are left now holding all those Bitcoin are waiting for way higher. So they're not stepping in to sell so quickly. And it might mean that they're actually gonna wait for notably higher prices before they really start selling. And then that's when you start seeing this really spike up aggressively and consistently, like we've seen at the top of prior market cycles to really mark that topping up point. And that will show up in these moving averages that look at profits across a wider window of time than the raw data. So when I look across all of these, what I'm seeing is that it sure seems like we're in the early stages of that parabolic expansion for Bitcoin. But the good news is that we have more room to work with. We're not seeing risk get to unsustainable levels like it does in prior market cycle tops. We're not seeing long-term holders sell aggressively, and we're just not seeing overwhelming sell pressure yet, or at least profit taking yet in the Bitcoin space. So all of those are good signs, suggesting that a lot of the people who are holding Bitcoin right now are still content to wait for higher prices, meaning they're not gonna be adding sell pressure and as more demand might step in, price can continue 
higher. And that's good news, not just for Bitcoin, but also for the rest of the crypto market for altcoins as well, because the higher that Bitcoin goes, the more profits people are able to realize off of Bitcoin, the bigger the hot ball of money that's going to exist that can roll into altcoins and bring them up. If you're not familiar with the term altcoins, it just means any crypto asset that's not Bitcoin. And so what you might expect is like in prior cycles, there's going to be a huge amount of gains that people are able to realize off of Bitcoin. They're going to be looking for somewhere to go with that. A lot of them aren't going to be content with just taking that and walking away. Some will, but a lot won't. They'll want to take that next risk. They'll want to take full advantage of the bull market when they can. They'll start moving into other assets like Ethereum or other altcoins that are, you know, haven't run yet. And then they'll pump them up. Then they'll go to other ones that haven't run yet. Go further and further out the risk curve to riskier and riskier altcoins. Eventually, it will all be too much. It will overextend and we'll have a big crash. But the idea is that that hot ball of money will happen for some short period of time. And when it does, things can get absolutely wild. So the final thing I just want to mention here then, is that if that's what we're going into, if we're going into one of these crazy bull markets, not just for Bitcoin, but for altcoins also afterwards, it is important to remain grounded. So obviously none of what I'm saying here is financial advice. You should do what makes the most sense for you. But one of the things I do want to talk about with crypto is that oftentimes people come in thinking that it's going to make them rich off of a very small original investment. You know, they think I can put in $200 and I'll be a millionaire. If you anchor yourself to that, if you anchor yourself on, I have not succeeded in this bull market unless I am rich, that can be a very dangerous game to play. It can mean that you hold longer than you should, hoping for higher prices, even when, for example, risk is at a maximum and suggesting that you're at the top and this is not the time to be taking on more risk. It can make you lead to bad decisions because you're holding on, desperately hoping to just ride things a little bit further to make it to that goal, which is probably unrealistic to begin with, of becoming rich. And then ultimately you don't sell when you should, you end up holding it all the way through the bear market and you end up with nothing or actually selling at a loss, which is not what we want. And so therefore, for me personally, when I look at crypto, my goal is not to make obscene amounts of money because that is the wrong framing. From my point of view, that biases you towards making bad decisions at the worst times. For me, it's more about, I just want to be at profit, first of all. That's the first main goal. That might seem silly, but really that's it. Because if you look at crypto, Except for these few moments, there's a lot of times when, for example, you bought at the top of one of these bull markets, you're going to be at a massive loss. Just being in profit is unrealistic at that point. You know, people who bought up here and then they're sitting over here, they're saying, man, I wish I was just at break even, let alone making a profit. So making a profit on its own is already a good goal to have, in my opinion. And then really just taking what the cycle gives you. That once it becomes clear that we're at the top, then maybe holding on to Bitcoin anymore is not the greatest idea, at least for the near term. Same thing will happen with altcoins. We have risk models for altcoins as well. There will be a time when if this all plays out similar to how it has in the past, altcoins will do the same thing. They'll go on a major run, but there will be a time to exit them as well. And so really you just want to take what you can get. And when the signal suggests that the top is here or near, it's probably best not to be just continue to take risk, hoping for more. Take what the market gives you and then you want to be the person who walked in profits up here at the top and then is just out of the market sitting happily in cash or other assets while the crypto market crashes and then maybe you come you can step back in at the lows and ride it up again that's how you are successful in crypto it's not by taking excessive risk at the top just hoping to get lucky some for some people it will work but for most it will not and certainly if you've been around for a bear market you know that it's a lot of people who buy the top then end up selling the bottom or bought the bottom last time, wrote it all the way up and then all the way down and somehow maybe even end up at a loss after doing all that. That's not ideal. And that's where I think frame of reference can be important. And that's why for me, I think anchoring yourself on becoming rich can be a little bit dangerous and why I don't try to think about it that way. But again, not financial advice. You should do what makes the most sense for you. But that's just more of a kind of a mindset thing I just wanted to mention as we get into this, it gets very easy to get caught up in the emotion and the hype and the euphoria up here and just think that crypto will never see a bear market again. Let's continue going up. That's never played out yet. I'd be skeptical to think that that's going to play out this time around. Remaining grounded is important. That's where I think having the right mindset going in can be very helpful. 
All right, hope you found the content useful. If you like the content, or subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and follow us over on X. A lot of updates about our models and more over there. And go to our website, partydigital.io, to see live data from our models and more.